Okay, you guys, September 19th and 20th is a high watch time for the rapture because it's the Feast of Trumpets and they're signing some Abraham Accord. And this is it, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to show you some scriptures <clears throat> um, that we need to take into account. And we're going to go over this so that, you know, we know for sure here. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way for that day. The rapture will not come unless the apostasy comes first, which also is translated rebellion, and the man of sin, the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist is revealed. So, <clears throat> one, the Antichrist is revealed before the rapture. This is a clear verse of scripture. Now, some people want to say that the word apostasy means uh, a departure. It doesn't. The prefix apo, it's a compound word, apostasy. Apo means a departure or far removed from, and stasi main, re, uh, means fruitfulness. So, the literal meaning of apostasy, apostasy, is one who has departed for, from or is far from fruitfulness. Okay, in the same way that the word bicycle, the actual literal meaning of bicycle is by, to, cycle, circles. So the literal meaning of bicycle is two circles. Okay, now we have another meaning for it, which means a machine that you ride in order to use for transportation. Okay, or exercise, a bicycle, but the but the compound word by and cycle is is very different from the word to. A bicycle is not to in the same word in the same way. Apos, apostasy does not mean a departure. It means a departure uh, or a uh, separation from fruitfulness. Okay, the word apostle, apostol means. One who is sent and departs and goes far away. The word apocenter means a portion that is away from the center. Apo, apostate or apostate. A state meaning a, a, a standing or a place. And apo meaning a far from or departure. So apost, apo, apostate means one who has departed from a standing. So to say that the word apostasy means a physical departure is completely wrong. That's like saying the word bicycle means two or the word tricycle means three. Once you add the compound words together, it changes the meaning completely. So do not let anyone deceive you by any means for that day will not come until first there be a great falling away, the apostasy, and the man of sin, the Antichrist, is revealed. Okay, now there's another very clear. Now that's a clear verse of scripture, so we know that um, the rapture is not going to happen September 2020. We, I guarantee you that. Okay, now here's another clear verse of scripture, Revelation 14, starting in verse six. Then I saw flying. Then I saw another angel flying in midair. He had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Then it says, uh, verse 8, Revelation 14, 8, A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. And then it says a third angel followed and said, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on his forehead or hand, he too will drink the wine of God's fury. Okay? So, we see that the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. And then, Jesus said, once the gospel is out to all nations, then the end will come. Well, what's it mean the end will come? The hour of God's judgment comes and Babylon the Great falls. Okay? So, then what happens after Babylon the Great falls? 
the mark of the beast comes out. A third angel followed, saying, if anyone worships the beast, and then what happens after the mark of the beast? We'll continue Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. Now, it doesn't say who, it doesn't say um, the patient endurance on the part of the saints who, who obey God's Ten Commandments or the law of Moses. It doesn't say that. It says, who have an ear to hear and obey what God tells them to do. Okay? Then what happens? Then, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Now, the, ter the word from now on is an indicator that this is continuing the sequence of events. Okay, then what happens next? We see the rapture. Okay, so, um, uh, it says, uh, Revelation 14, 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, the Spirit says they will rest from their labor. Their deeds will follow them. Their deeds will follow them. If you've done good deeds, your good deeds will follow you. But if you've done bad deeds, your bad deeds will follow you. And then it says, I looked and there before me was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. He who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested. Okay, now... That's the rapture. And the reason that's the rapture is because if you go one more verse, uh, like two or three ver more verses, it says, And I saw what looked like a sea of glass, Revelation 15, 2, mixed with fire, and those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and over the number of his name. Now, if the rapture ha were to happen before the mark of the beast comes out, it would have to have happened in Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. Or verse 8 but it doesn't it happens in verse 9 okay in other words the harvest of the earth revelation chapter 14 verse 14 would have to be moved to revelation 14 verse 8 okay so what i'm saying is the gospel goes out to every nation language tribe and people then the hour of god's judgment comes and babylon the great falls then the mark of the beast comes out then this calls for patient endurance and faithfulness and there's going to be martyrs, persecution and martyrs. Then what happens next? The rapture. Okay, now there's more. If you want to know more about what's going to happen, I'll show you. Uh, Matthew chapter um, 22, verse 11. It talks about the wedding banquet. I'll go down, I'll start. Um, uh, Revelation 22, verse uh, 8. Then the Lord said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. Go to the street corners, invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? Then the king told his attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Okay? That's why there's a great falling away. And that's why it requires patient endurance and faithfulness. Okay? Now, look at Matthew chapter uh, 24, verse 7 through 9. This is important because this goes... Remember, the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. And then the hour of God's judgment comes. And Babylon the Great falls. And then the mark of the beast comes out. Then persecution and martyrs. Then the rapture. Now let's look at Matthew 24, verse 7. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are beginnings of birth pains. What happens right after the beginning of birth pains? Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith. Well, that sounds like exactly what happens in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12 and 13, just before the rapture. And look, then we see way down 
at verse 30, Matthew 24, verse 30. The coming of the Son of Man with power and great glory, verse 31, and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect. Now, wasn't it an angel who was seated on a cloud who, who received a command to reap? And so when the rapture actually happens, God sends his angels out. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 13 because this is a clear picture of the rapture. Now remember, you read Matthew chapter or Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through 20, and you see the rapture. And if you read Matthew chapter 13, ready? Are you ready? Verse 37 through 41, this is the rapture. Are you ready? Verse 37 through 41. The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. As weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom. Not weed out of the world, but weed out of his kingdom. Everything that causes sin and all who do evil, they will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 14 and continue the sequence of events. The gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people, Revelation 14, 6. Then the hour of God's judgment comes and Babylon the Great falls, Revelation chapter uh, 14, verse 7 and 8. Then the mark of the beast comes out, verse 9 through 11. Then patient endurance, faithfulness, and martyrs, verse 12 and 13. Then the rapture. Revelation 14, 14, I looked and there before me was a white cloud seated on the cloud, one like the Son of Man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then an angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was seated on the cloud, take your sickle and reap. So we see these are angels who are doing the harvest. Okay? For the hour, for the time, for the, for the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he was seated on the cloud, swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. But wait a minute. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 37 through 41, it also talks about weeds who are weeded out of the kingdom. And Matthew chapter uh, 22, verse 11, talks about a guy who was in the wedding hall. And then he got kicked out of the wedding hall and thrown back into the earth where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, look, continue on. Revelation 14, verse 17. Another angel came out of the heaven, came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel who had charge of the fire, this is the angel in charge of the fire, came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle. Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vines because its grapes are ripe. Then the angel swung its sickle on the earth and gathered its grapes and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath and they were trampled in the winepress outside the city. Okay, it's the angel who's in charge of the fire who says, remember the weeds are, are bundled and thrown into the fire? And here comes an angel who gives the command to throw the grapes into the winepress of God's wrath. Now, what are the grapes then? Well, let's go to John chapter 15. Are you ready? John chapter 15. The Gospel of John. John chapter 14, 7. Chapter 15, 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Okay, so uh, we see the vine. Now, if we go back to Revelation 14, it says, um, Then the angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was seated on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And then, if you go down, take your sharp sickle, gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. Jesus, God the Father is the gardener. Jesus is the vine. It says it right here. Jesus said, John 5, 15, 5, I am the, the vine. You are the branches. Now, he was talking to his disciples. He, he was talking to Peter and John and James and 
all the disciples that he knew. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I... And any if, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does remain in me, he is like a branch that is... Or does not remain in me. He is like a branch that is thrown away, withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. Okay, so those people who are disobedient Christians, even if you make it to the rapture, you're going to be harvested out. You're going to be weeded out. That's for the for the... The false teachers, the weeds among the wheat, okay? Now, let's talk about the hour of God's judgment real quick. Remember, the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people, and then the hour of God's judgment comes and Babylon the Great falls. Okay, so let's look at Revelation chapter 17, verse 12. It says, The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. The problem is the word for is not in the original Greek. The original Greek actually says, The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but receive authority as kings one hour along with the beast. Okay? So we see the beast and the ten leaders, the ten political leaders of the government of the Antichrist. Now everybody's looking for the Antichrist. Who's the Antichrist? Who's the Antichrist? There's ten leaders of the Antichrist. There's ten leaders of the beast. One of them is the Antichrist. So, Pit, Putin, Jinping, all right, so look, we see the beast comes to power in one hour, and if we go to Revelation chapter 18, 10, it says, Woe, woe, O great city, O Babylon, O city of power, in one hour your doom has come. And then if we go to verse 19, it says, Woe, woe, O great city. Uh, where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour, she has been brought to ruin. <clears throat> so Babylon the Great falls in one hour. Okay, and then let's look at Revelation. Uh, okay, so the hour of God's judgment comes. Babylon the Great falls in one hour. The beast comes to power in one hour. What is the beast then? Well, let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Then I saw a sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, his tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. Well, that's the devil, right? No, the enormous red dragon is China. And the stars it sends from the sky to the earth is a nuclear strike. Okay, and the reason I say this is because the enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. Well, we know the ten horns are the ten leaders who have not yet received a kingdom, but receive authority as kings one hour along with the beast. So the enormous red dragon is part of the kingdom of the beast. What else is the Antichrist? What is the beast? Well, Revelation chapter 13. I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads. Okay, so this is the government of the Antichrist. How can the Antichrist come out of the sea? How can the government? He doesn't. It's the, the beast is the government of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is one of the ten horns. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, that's Islam, but had feet like those of a bear, that's Russia. That means the government of the beast has feet of a bear. That means the whole government of the beast, the, the government that the Antichrist is king over, is standing on Russia. The dragon gave the beast its power. So we have Russia, China, and the bear how can they come rising out of the sea? Because it's an invasion. It's an invasion onto the shores of Babylon the Great. You say, why is that in Revelation 12? And then uh, we see the hour of God's judgment happens in Revelation chapter 14. Because the sequence of events begins in Revelation 14, 6. And this sequence of events, Revelation 12, 1 to um, 14, 5. I'm sorry. Yeah, 14, 5. When Jesus returns... Then I looked, and there before me was a lamb standing on Mount Zion. When Jesus first returns, he first lands on Mount Zion and takes over Mount Zion with 144,000. At that time, the uh, sixth trumpet and the sixth bowl of God's wrath are the same thing. At that time, the armies of the beast cross the Euphrates River and are gathered together. Okay, and it even says that, gathering the kings of the earth. Um, that's Revelation chapter... I'll read it for you real quick. 
Um, <clears throat> see, there's 16. This is important. You need to get a hold of this. Okay, no, it's Revelation 16. The sixth trumpet is the same event as the sixth bowl of God's wrath. One angel sounds a trumpet, and the other angel pours out the wrath. The fifth trumpet is the first bowl of God's wrath. When painful and ugly, when when the locust with the scorp with the sting of a scorpion attack, painful and ugly sores break out on the people with the mark of the beast. <clears throat> That's taking the fifth trumpet and the first bowl of God's wrath and put them together. They're the same event. The sixth trumpet. And the sixth bowl of God's wrath is the same event. It's a war that uh, the beast, the, 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 the armies of the beast cross the Euphrates River and on their way to Mount Zion to attack the king of kings and lord of lords who has just landed his feet on Mount Zion and taken over. Okay? And then in the seventh trumpet, in the seventh bowl of God's wrath, the enormous earthquake, the big giant earthquake... The seventh trumpet, the seventh bowl of God's wrath are the same event. You need to study this out. There's an enormous earthquake. That enormous earthquake is the Zechariah chapter 14 earthquake that splits the Mount of Olives in half. Okay? So so if you want so when Jesus first lands, he lands on Mount Zion, and as he moves out to take ground, he next goes to um, uh, the Mount of Olives. And at that time, when he takes the Mount of Olives, there's an earthquake that destroys... It's the most enormous earthquake ever in the history of the whole world, okay? And it's the sixth, or the seventh trumpet and the seventh bowl of God's wrath. And it's also found in Zechariah 14, where the Mount, Mount of Olives is split in two, and part of the Mount goes north, and the other part goes south, okay? All right, so here's what I'm saying. Basically, when you see stars falling from the sky, Revelation 6, 12 through 17, the stars fall from the sky, the sky is rolled up like a scroll. The Lord once spoke to me and said, the sky rolled up like a scroll is a, is a mushroom cloud from a nuclear strike. He told me China is the enormous red dragon and the stars it sends from the sky to the earth are nukes. Okay, and when China launches that first strike, they only use one third of their nuclear arsenal. When Jesus spoke of the stars falling from the sky and then will be seen the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man, he was speaking about the sky being rolled up like a scroll. And if you read Matthew chapter uh, 24, verse 29 through 31, you'll see the stars fall from the sky and then will be seen the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man. Then all nations will mourn, which is the same as in Revelation chapter um uh, 6 verse uh, 15 and 16 and 17 where all nation, all people are hiding in the dens of the rocks calling out to the rocks saying, and the mountains saying fall on us for the great day of the Lord's wrath has come. That's all the same event. When you see stars falling from the sky that's nuclear war, war World War 3. It's also the hour of God's judgment. The hour that the beast gets into a war with Babylon the Great. The beast is Russia, China, North Korea, Iran and Turkey and Babylon the Great is the United States standing alone because the UK stands down. Great Britain stands down. Australia stands down. <clears throat> Although they're going to receive nukes. Anyway. So the beast and Babylon the Great get into a war. The beast comes to power. Babylon the Great falls. Okay, And that war lasts one hour. It's a nuclear exchange. A nuclear strike. Then the beast comes rising out of the sea. Russia and China invade. Okay. What happens next? Then the mark of the beast comes out. Then patient endurance and faithfulness. Then the number has to be complete of those who are to be put to death for their faith. Then the rapture. Okay? After all the foolish virgins fall away. Now, Matthew 25, the foolish virgins. Jesus said at the end of the age, he was talking about the end of the age, the kingdom of heaven. He didn't say the world. He said the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. He didn't say the world will be like ten virgins. He said the, the kingdom of God will be like ten virgins. And then it says at midnight the cry rings out. Now what's the doomsday clock midnight? Doomsday. World War III. So at midnight is in, the, in Matthew 25 where it says at midnight. 
That's your nuclear war. When nuclear war happens, when Russia and China get into a nuclear strike with the United States, and you see on the horizon mushroom clouds rising on the horizon, and you realize that's exactly where downtown Dallas is. Or, oh my God, look at the, oh, ah, everybody's screaming and pointing on the horizon, and, and, you're, and, and over there, right where, right where uh, downtown uh, Denver is, is a giant mushroom cloud. And you're going, that's when everybody, that's the hour of God's judgment. That's the moment that all the virgins wake up and trim their lamps. And they all realize, oh my God, this is not a pre-tribulation rapture. The hour of God's judgment has come. And when that nuclear strike happens, it lasts literally one hour. Okay? So, this is the future. This is what the Word of God says. This is why I know that there ain't going to be no rapture until everything comes to pass exactly as is written. So before the rapture, what happens before the rapture? The hour of God's judgment comes. World War III nuclear war with Russia and China. The beast comes rising out of the sea. The Antichrist is revealed. The mark of the beast comes out. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness. And then blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. Then the number is complete of those who are to be put to death for their faith. Then the rapture. And when the rapture happens, those who are not faithful to God get cut off and thrown back down to the earth. Just like the grapes are thrown into the wine press of God's wrath. Even though they were part of the vine. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. But the grapes, you fat little grapes, have done nothing but suck out all the nutrients in the vine. <laughs>